Thank you for joining us for today's webinar, an introduction to UTT and tunnel boring machines. We have some quick housekeeping before we start. Your phones are on mute. If you have any questions, please type them into the question and answer box in the corner of your screen and we'll answer them at the end of this session, time permitting, or we'll answer them via email after. And you can always send questions to mapaydigital at mapay.com. Now, without further delays, I'd like to introduce our speakers, James Pinkley, Christina Onyate, and Tanner Mert. We'll start with Jim. James Pinkley is MAPE's UTT North American Manager. He has a BS in Mining Engineering from Missouri University of Science and Technology in Rolla, Missouri. He brings 30 years industry experience to the team. Christina Onyate is MAPE UTT Technical Services Representative with a special focus on mechanical tunneling jobs. Christina is a PhD in Environmental Engineering Tunneling from Polytechnic University of Turin in Italy and a BS and MS in Civil Engineering from Central University of Venezuela from Polytechnic University of Turin. Tanner Mert is MAPE UTT's Sales Support Specialist. Tanner provides technical support to customers in both the tunneling and mining industries. He has a BS in Industrial Engineering from West Virginia University and is an NCEES Certified Engineer in Training. We'll start with Jim. Jim, the floor is yours. Welcome and good afternoon. We'll start with our MAPE UTT Technologies for TBM and we'll go to our next general slides on MAPE. Uh, after that, I'll lead into Christina on Ede, and then Tanner Mert will take over at a later point. Group statistics for MAPE, over $3 billion in revenues annually, so over 66,000 customers, 83 plants and located in over 90 countries, over 10,500 employees, and over 12% of those employees are in R&D with 5% of revenues being in R&D, producing 1,000 new formulas each year. As you can see, MAPE around the world, 83 plants and 90 subsidiaries. Uh, in regards to that, MAPE UTT is located in most of these footprints with MAPE on that global scale that you can see on the slide. MAPE UTT is approximately a $70 million entity worldwide. The 80 years of MAPE, you can see the start in 1937, the move in 1977 and 86 into North America with Canada then US, and then the further moves throughout the globe, uh, totaling 92 countries during the time period. MAPE is the largest privately held chemical company in the world. MAPE facilities in North America, 27 facilities throughout Canada, the US, and the Caribbean. Our facilities and plants are open for our UTT customers and as well as RD for at any time. It would be at on request. This is our headquarters located in Deerfield Beach, Florida. Uh, that's where our key RNC R and D uh, lab is located. Uh, we have another one in Laval, Quebec, and we have the capability to support UTT customers with testing out of our West Chicago plant. These are our key marketplaces. Tunneling is the majority of our revenues. Underground construction is a platform developed by our MAPE core products that we are able to utilize in underground applications. And then mining, which typically it's the underground mining aspect of that. We're, we're developing that platform with additional growth for out, our out years coming. MAPE UTT, when you look at us, you know, for our market, innovation, technical support, experience, expertise, and logistics are all key for us. Our customers are 24 7 operations. Typically, the tunnel projects we're on have a value of 100 million to billions of dollars. So when our customers have downtime, it's $10,000 a minute of lost revenues typically. 
So innovation, that's supported by the 12% of employees in R&D, the thousand new uh, formulas are developed each year, and the 5% of revenue is devoted to that. We have the most environmentally friendly solutions, and Christina will get further into that for uh, soil conditioning and polyformers. Technical support, as described early in this discussion, the three of us are engineers. Beyond us engineers are subject matter experts with somewhere between 25 and 35 years experience in the field. Expertise, that's what our team brings to our customer base. It's expected, it's to hand over and work with the partners such as MAPE UTT on these projects. Confidence is a key issue. Logistics, our, our OTD has to be at a high level to support our projects. Our, our administration team is agile and has been at this for years and does an excellent job. These are our product categories. We're with the customer from the beginning of their project as they access the underground area via shafts or declines, as well as their excavation during that time. The picture to the right is a segmentedly lined uh, concrete tunnel. It could be used for various uh, final, final applications such as subways or CSO water applications. But within the construction of that are the various products that you see in the middle, which would be injection, waterproofing, and then you see the mecha mechanized tunneling part of it. We're also in with the customer on the repair and maintenance aspects after the facility is completed. This is our MAPE UTT team for North, North America. As described earlier, Dr. Onede, she leads our TBM work. Tanner is our TBM engineer. Uh, Bill Cheatham in the Western US is a graduate of McKay School of Mines, Nevada, Reno. He brings 20 years experience. Monica Rourke is a subject matter expert in injection and waterproofing. She has 30 plus years experience. Brett Zamoroff in Western Canada is our shockrete expert beyond 25 plus years experience working in underground and underground construction and mining. Michelle Fortune brings 25 plus years experience with injection and waterproofing. Uh, Ramon Creos is another degreed civil engineer. He leads our water membrane waterproofing area. Uh, Hayden Whittem is a subject matter expert with over 25 years of experience with injection. Myself as discussed, uh, Bill Allen in memory. He was our former shockrete expert that uh, we lost earlier this year. You can see our key administration team, Kathy, Crystal, and Andreo to the right. They do an excellent job in support of our customer base. And then below them, you see our worldwide support team led by Enrico Del Negro and his team of product experts and engineers that are situated throughout the globe. This is our contact information. Uh, one of the things that we do bring in, and I think we can move to the next piece, is for our customers, you know, we have over 200 years of combined industry experience in tunneling, underground construction, mining, shotcrete, waterproofing, five languages spoken. But if our customers run into an issue, we can tap on that worldwide team that you saw earlier and typically, we can have three or four working examples of how MAPE products were utilized to solve a problem for our customers within 24 hours to our customer upon request. We have hundreds of mixed designs. Dr. Onede and Tanner will get further into that as, as this presentation moves forward. In the photo there, you see uh, Tanner and Christina at a job site. Behind them is the slurry treatment plant, or STP, for a slurry uh, TBM application. The R&D team, as we discussed, Deerfield Beach, Laval, Quebec, uh, West, West Chicago, and Milan, Italy. Uh, they support the various mixed designs, the soil conditioning, and the, the engineering and technical work that has to be done so that our products work properly in the field for our customers. The photo to right is some of our tanks that are in support of a tunnel boring machine application on site. As we discussed, our logistical team, we get the right products at the right time to the job, for the job site conditions. In regards to this, today, the real focus here is me mechanized tunneling. And with that, I'll be handing off to D Dr. Christina Onede. Christina? Thank you, Jim. Hello. Next one. 
I would like to start by defining what is a tunnel boring machine, TBM. Um, it's commonly now has a mold. Um, it's a machine that, um, used for excavating full section tunnels through a variety soil of rock strata. Uh, there are different types of TBM. Selection is determined um, primarily by the geology and the underwater uh, condition present during the alignment. A general classification could be the one proposed on this slide. For example, if mining in soft ground, the time of TBM could be air pressure balance, EPB, in which the excavated material is used to support the tunnel phase. At the same time, has it is being plasticized using chemical products, forming agents mainly, um, to make it um, transportable and impermeable. Then we have the slurry shield or hydro shield machine um, in which the preservation of the excavation phase applied with um, bentonite slurry. Then we, could, we can have open phase machines. It means that no pressure is applied in the front. So this option can be used when the ground is stable, stable by itself. Um, so there is no risk of settlement on the surface. Then if we are mining, for example, in hard rock, we could have shield or open machine. The difference between them is uh, there is rings or cement in the shield and no rings in the open. Um, the last classification we made here is the micro tunnel shield or pipe jacking. They are quite similar in the technology with the previous one, but usually as smaller, they can vary from two to 12 feet approx. So it means like too small to for walk in. So um, there are many advantages to mining using a TBM. Some of them are listed in this um, slide. When higher advanced rates, uh, it's in average a TBM escape of uh, around 50 to 50 feet per day. Um, in normal condition, a TBM can work continually without any significant delay, so it's increased the productivity. In some places of the world, they work seven days a week. Here in the US, it mainly is five or six days a week, but in, in, in always 24 hours a day. Um, the TBM causes less impact to the, ground, to the ground as compared with the other drilling machines or excavation methods. Um, the impact on the surface um, is lower. The TBM requires a large launching and reduced shaft, uh, keeping unalterated the operativity in the normal life of the surface, for example, the traffic noise vibration. Um, this characteristic is really important when, op when working in urban areas mainly. Um, then, of course, it's very important the um, the safety that is improving according to the other mining methods. Uh, the TBMs are safer than other machines and cause less damage to the site, as well as the people working on, on site. Um, when segment, the TBM provides also the definite, uh, definitive line. Um, the TBM also can be operated from a cabin, and then uh, it's an automated operation. Um, so th this is um, some of the really good advantage to why today there is the uh, TBM are really um, too much use it. So well, what kind of projects are TBM normally used for? Um, transportation like metro, railway, highways, also for water. So in combined sewer overflow, now that has CO. CSO tunnels, um, water supply, hydroelectric or sewer tunnels. Uh, they are also used in mining, especially to drive um, the access to the new ore bodies. Or the other application, for example, like power distribution, tunnels, oil transportation. So. To go a little more deeper into the time solution of products that my pay offers, to TBM, TBM customer, 
I would like to summarize that um, the TBN classification we had made before um, to, to make some groups to show you some different solution. We will start by talking about some, the machines that apply pressure in the, um, in the face, such as EPB and slurry machines, the first two in this classification. I will briefly explain the principle of working um, of them, uh, which MAPE products can be associated to them. So, for example, um, uh, we will start with the EPB machines. Uh, the pressure uh, on the face, the toner, is applied by the same soil. So, we can see in the bottom of this slide, uh, the first is the natural soil. Uh, which is not suitable for EPB excavation. Then we can see the foam, foam added to the soil, uh, and the result of this is the conditioned soil that is okay for mining with EPB. So the correct uh, soil condition is really important because uh, it allows to keep the stability um, on the tunnel phase. So number one, the reason why it's important. Number two is because reduce the wear on the metallic part of the TPM. And number three, improve the flow through the screw conveyor and belt. And all of these translate in safer excavation, so safety of the worker, reducing downtime. Um, of course, uh, this is really important, save the cost. So, um, what are the products needed for the soil conditioning with the EPB? Uh, how to choose them? Uh, MAPE has complete range of products for EPB, both foaming agent and polymer. Um, the choice of the products depends on different factor, um, type of soil, under, uh, under water condition, environmental requirements, and different, different um, modes. Polymers are usually in, avoided in the, in the market. So they are used only when the only foaming agent is not uh, enough. But uh, because of that, they represent uh, solutions. Um, the soil conditioning parameters depend on several facts, geology, excavation pressure, TBM characteristics, design, um, amount of water, dimension of the, of the project, uh, the fact, human factor like the TBM operator. Um, so all of them need the really specialized knowledge. Uh, they are also polymer for the MOOC treatment. Like you can see in the bottom of this email, this slide. Um, once uh, once inside the soil, um, for example, needs to be a little drier. Uh, so there is product that can be added to change the um, behavior of, this, of the soil. MAPE has a full range of those products as well. Um, I'm prone to say I'm prone to say that MAPE has all of the solution in the traditional uh, or the standard way. But more importantly, um, we also have the most um, environmental and friendly solution on the market uh, for both foam or polymer. Um, we have, in this case, I'm, I'm glad, proud to say also that we have um, cert documents uh, for TPAR laboratories that certify a laser impact on the water and live organism in the soil. Um, so additional to the um, innovation and high quality products, MAPE offer to all its customers free of, of charge our technical service, uh, prior to and during the excavation of the project. In the case of uh, soil conditioning for EPB, it includes evaluation on um, of the project specification and a study of the geotechnical baseline report, GBR, in order to suggest the right products and make a preliminary estimation. Then we ask our customer to send us samples to perform laboratory tests like soil, con soil classification and soil conditioning tests to make a better study of the parameter previously estimated. On site and system during, during the entire of the project, it allows to other issues or challenge, um, so increase the TBN's performance. For all of those activities, we provide technical report that sometimes are needed for some to, to the owner. 
Uh, in the picture, you can see a soil condition in TAS in, in our lab, just to like reference. So, um, step up for the slurry TBM now. The principle of the excavation is similar to the APB, just discussed, but the ventilized slurry is added to apply the pressure in the external phase um, for the transportation of the mug. The importance of the of doing it correctly is the same as the um, EPB pressure, stability, wear, flow, safety, sometimes um, for cost. Um, difference to the EPB, there is the need to use a uh, slurry treatment plant, STP, uh, where the soil is um, discarded and the ventilated slurry is reused as much as possible. Um, so, what are the products that NAPEI offer to a correct excavation with a slurry machine? Uh, started by the high quality vent sodium ventonite, our name is MAPEVEN API, uh, that conforms the um, API drilling grade uh, specification, like uh, drilling grade bentonite, and uh, this is suggested to, for use in the me mechanized tunnel lid with the slurry and aerosol TBM. MAPE also uh, has a whole range of polymer that should be determined case, case by case according to the project needs and slurry parameters. Um, just polymers uh, could be needed for the excavation or could be needed for the slurry treatment plan. Uh, also in this case, uh, MAPE has an um, additional to the standard products, some innovative solutions for lower environmental impacts as well. So um, why it is it's important for MAPE customers to have a free um, technical access in the excavation with the slurry TBM? As in this case, we make preliminary study for, of the products um, in order to suggest the, the right products and make a preliminary estimation. We perform slurry characterization tests in our laboratory. We work with customer to have the dosage optimization that is really important and of course, uh, we are with, with our customer on site during the entire life of the project to address any problem, issues, challenge, and so increase the TBM performance. For all of those activities, we also provide a technical report. In the picture here, you can see a filter press that is one of the equipment used for the um, slurry classification. So, having covering the topic of the pressure of the um, conditioning, I would like to talk about another group of products which are necessary for all machines that have segments. So, the previous name, EPB or slurry machines, but also the open space with cement. There is a backfill um, grout which is used to, in, in the picture you can see in blue, that is used to fill the space between the chill in grade and the soil in ground. Um, that is the space created in the, has the machine moved forward and is to spread uh, left from the, from the chill and the brusher as well. So it is very important to study this, this drought, which today is mainly used the two component drought, which is a component A, with the water bentonite additive on cement and a component B, the accelerator. So has this required a re really particular and detailed study. We ask of customer to send us um, samples of the cement. Next time, samples of the of the cement. Um, they are considering to to use uh, to to perform tests and optimize the receipt. We use our bentonite that is dif that is different for the previous bentonite. Uh, we have um, retarder CBS CBS one line, and we have also different accelerator. So, uh, which test we, we can perform to to make this test? We can make the fluidity with the marsh corn. We can also measure the density of the grout with the smooth balance. We if we follow the blip test within a cylinder, we also 
in the first set we we measure the gel fan set that it means when the the, the two component is not more liquid we have we can see here component a a component b um so we mix them in the cup until the grout is more not longer liquid so we we measure this in seconds um this is a really important value because uh it's mixing right before the grout leaves the the pore of the tbm so we need the the gel faster gel to cover the, the space So we also measure the workability of the, the grout. It means uh, how much just the component A remain liquid um, for by cell, in by cell. This is important, for example, because the grout can remain in the lines, in the tanks. And so we, we, we have to guarantee that it will not um, be a problem in the, in the TBM. But also there is a hardness properties that we need to measure, so we use some Dynamometer to see the one really early spring could be one hour, two hour, or five hour, and also we measure according to the STM the spring one day, seven day, and twenty eight days according to the specification of each product. So, and this presentation I would like to present um, an example of the evaluation optimization of the mixed design using different raw material. In this example here. We have used um, um, two different salmon. We we define at the beginning the, the target with the with customer. So we fix where is the value for each of these properties according to the specification of the project. The project. So we receive, for example, two types of salmon. We start with the same salmon a different bentonite just to evaluate the performance of the different bentonite. In this case, we use the same mix design. So we can see in the price the results we obtain. So we see um, an important difference in the fluidity and the bleed. It means that uh, the bentonite in the mix two has to be adjusted. So for example, to repeat the test, we increase the bentonite just for the mix two to 20, 25 kilos each cubic meter to 32. Then we can see another value and difference. For example, the gel time, both of them are long, longer. Um, sometimes uh, it depends on the semen, but of the accelerator as well. So in, the, in this case, like the one hour strength was also more than the necessary, we decided to de uh, decrease the accelerator, changing the accelerator size we have. We have both of them, like I said before. So we decrease to the, let's see, less concentrated uh, accelerator because we have room to optimize the cost here. Uh, but we also, uh, increase the decrease the accelerate the volume that we put in the in the in the formulation. So um, then we also have the workability. In this case, was longer than they required. So they required three days, and we had four days. So in the optimization process, we also decrease the retarder to test it. So we we can see them mix three and four. Um, for, sorry, for the salmon, we see that the, there were good results um, for the spring, one day, seven day, and 20 days. So we remain invariable the quantity of salmon in this case. Even if the salmon is a different one, we started to see what happened. So for the mix three and four, we have um, good results in terms of all the parameters. We test with salmon two, um, but if, the same bentonite to see what happens. So in this case, we see that we had optimized the quantity of retarder. We we optimized the retarder, we decrease the retarder, decrease the accelerator, but remain um, the same quantity of salmon, but for one of the bentonite, we had to increase the quantity. Uh, this mix design, now I'm showing you just four, for example, but um, uh, we usually, uh, they a little more of them, um, and it's important that we will um, provide the final mix design with each raw material you provide. I mean, if the semen is different, we will also test uh, the different the different condition to meet all the. So there are so many benefits uh, that our customer find working uh, with us for the vaccine rounds as well. 
we started with the evaluation of the project specification, uh, recommended uh, the right products to, to meet all the requirements. Uh, we received the raw material to perform the two component grout test uh, with mixed development and mixed optimization. Very important. It allows to evaluate the consistent materials. Um, when, once the bus plan is on site, we work with our customer to commission in plan um, them to correlate the lab, the lab uh, result to the bus plan um, according to the site condition. So, uh, as I maybe insisted here, we are um, with our customer on site during the entry life of the project to address issues or challenges. Uh, for all our activity, we provide technical reports. Uh, by the way, this is this is mine. The picture in the job site when when some test was was required to support the operation to um, or, or, or customer. So now I would like to give the floor to my colleague Tanner, who will speak about another products and um, solution that my pay offer to cover um, all the TBN needs. Um, that Thank you, Christina. Um, I will be covering uh, the last section of TBM consumable products that we offer. Um, and that, that's, uh, these products would apply to all types of TBM, and that is the grease and, uh, and lubricant family of products. Um, our lineup of greases includes uh, tail seal grease, main bearing sealant, um, lubricant, uh, and also eco-friendly lubricants. and uh, and hydraulic oils. Um, so this is our, our list of um, grease products that we offer. Um, another thing to note here is that we are hoping to um, very soon come uh, have a North American production of our tail seal grease uh, that can make us uh, more competitive in that market for, for our customers. Um, again, like the backfill grout, like the soil conditioning and slurry, uh, we provide evaluation, uh, laboratory tests, on-site assistance, and um, you really uh, you get very very good technical service. Uh, also comes with the grease, as well as the rest of our of our products. Um, this uh, picture on the on the right here is a picture of uh, the grease dispersing system on a, on a TBM. Uh, this would be for the tail seal grease. And this was actually at the uh, a job that I'll be talking about very soon here in uh, in New York. Um, for our chemicals, we provide uh, on-site storage. It's another advantage of uh, of MAPE UTT. Um, so these are uh, some examples of of what our on-site storage might look like. Uh, these are bulk silos for our liquid chemicals. Um, we also provide uh, different configurations depending on the layout of the job site. Sometimes uh, customers request them or prefer the storage in containers. Um, these containers, you'll notice, are insulated, um, and that helps us in some of the northern climates that get cold. Uh, we have to protect the, uh, the chemicals from freezing, um, so that's why we insulate and heat the containers. Another thing I wanted to point out on this slide was in the first picture, on the left, uh, this is a picture of a um, of a level sensor that we just recently installed on one of our systems of tanks, and this can show you real time data on on an app on your phone uh, for us and for our customer to uh, monitor the levels of their tanks in real time. So that's another uh, another benefit in new technology that we are we are looking we are using now. Um, moving on, the last segment of, um, of products here is for repairs and waterproofing of TBM tunnels. Um, this picture here on the right was taken at a job in Hartford, Connecticut, um, and they are doing some cementaceous uh, injection there. Um, but you can see on the left, we have, uh, we have a whole line of waterproofing um, injection materials that uh, that are suitable for whatever kind of water problems you may have. Um, so when there's the water coming into the, into the tunnel, um, you can call us and, and we will have a solution for you. Um, another type of problem that you might see in tunnels, um, especially after they're 
completed or nearing the end of completion is um, damage to the, to the segments. These are the precast segments that are installed in the tunnel lining. Um, some, sometimes can have defects or cracks. Um, we work with our with the CRS division here uh, to offer some some products to repair um, segments. Um, we we actually have a list of um, you can see here. There's 13 types of defects and repair criteria, and based on the type of defect and our classification of that, we can recommend a, a solution for how to repair that. And we have a guide that we give to our customers that that details all of that. Um, moving on, uh, this is this will be the last section of our presentation here. Uh, we just wanted to uh, to go over some of our current projects that we're working on now. Um, to start, uh, there's the uh, the South Hartford Conveyance and Storage Tunnel in Hartford, Connecticut. It's a combined sewer overflow tunnel (CSO). Um, this project was started in late 2018 um, and will be completed uh, in early 2021. Um, here's a picture of us, uh, me, doing some uh, injection work uh, at that tunnel. Um, the next project uh, that we're on right now is called 3R Port, Three Rivers Protection and Overflow Reduction Tunnel. Again, a combined sewer overflow tunnel. Um, meant to protect the, the rivers. Um, this one is in Fort Wayne, Indiana. And um, this one started in early, uh, in late 2019, or sorry, early 2019, and will com be completed here early uh, this coming spring. Um, this one is a, uh, is a slurry shield TBM. Um, the previous one was a hard rock. Um, next is the Northeast Boundary Tunnel in Washington, DC. Um, this one was started in late 2018 and will continue until spring of 2021. Uh, this is an earth pressure balance TBM, uh, as Christina talked about earlier. And um, this one is also for a uh, combined sewer overflow. Um, next is a slurry TBM in um, Babylon, New York. This is on Long, on Long Island. Um, this is a smaller diameter, only 9.8 feet. So it's uh, it's a little cramped when you're in there, but um, this one is for a, a wastewater outfall. Uh, so that that would be um, uh, it starts at a sewage treatment plant, and the clean water is pumped out. Uh, flow will, will eventually flow through this tunnel um, and be released out into the bay. Um, another project, this is a new one for us in California, in Los Angeles. It's the uh, Purple Line Extension 3. This will be a subway tunnel. It's a twin bore um, TBM. Uh, so this is a, a pretty uh, significant project here. And uh, this is one that we, we will just be starting up here uh, in the coming weeks. And finally, for, uh, for our projects is the Anasis Island Tunnel in Vancouver. Uh, this is another wastewater outfall, small diameter, similar to Bergen Point, uh, but this one will be starting uh, late this year into early next year. So um, with that, this is the last slide um, in the conclusion of our presentation. Uh, you'll notice that you have, uh, you saw a very similar slide earlier in the presentation that, uh, that Jim went over. Um, but really, the goal of this presentation is is when we show it to our customers is to show um, why would why would they choose Mape UTT over somebody else? And uh, these five key areas: innovation, technical support, experience, expertise, and logistics are the reasons that we feel that are the reasons that we can set ourselves apart from some of our competitors. And in the end, our goal is to uh, to make sure that customers finish the project on time on budget in a safe way. And uh, with that, I'd just like to turn it over to any questions. Well, Thank yes. Thank you guys. That was really informative. Um, we do have some questions actually. Uh, the first one, how does the performance of the eco-friendly soil conditioner compare to traditional soil conditioners? Mm, I can't remember that. Um, 
100% comparable. The technical performance is, is the same for the, the normal one. So this something that we have not carried about. So. Good. Okay, uh, the next question. What is a CSO tunnel and why are there so many in the US? Okay, I can take that one. So uh, a CSO, combined sewage overflow tunnel, um, is, is a tunnel that captures uh, both sewage and stormwater in, in the case of rain. Um, they are building a lot of them right now in, in all of the major cities and have been for, for quite a few years uh, because of an EPA regulation uh, from the 90s that uh, said, um, well, let me start over. Basically, um, what happens when it rains in major cities is that it, it causes uh, the stormwater system in a city to become overwhelmed and overflow. And when you have a city that has stormwater mixed with sewage, as many do, uh, when you get an overflow, sewage often flows into the river. Um, so the reason we're putting in these CSO tunnels now is to increase that stormwater retention capacity in the event of large rains, which we're seeing more and more of uh, flooding and hurricanes and sorts of weather events uh, now. And um, so the whole point is to stop putting sewage into our rivers and uh, the CSO tunnels uh, do that in a good way and help us clean up the environment. Ah, that's good. It's good that we can be there uh, to play a part. Uh, last question, it looks like, unless somebody chimes in here. Uh, what upcoming projects will have TBM technology? I kind of touched on that. Yeah, I'll take that a part of this. And if Christina and Tanner want to add in after after my comments, they can feel free. Certainly on the East Coast, uh, the Meglif project is a major project. It's, uh, I think, a $60 billion project to put in the Meglift type uh, high speed rail transportation from DC up to New York City, including the Baltimore BWI Airport. Beyond that, uh, is uh, other projects such as Delta Conveyance on the West Coast, which is a 40 mile tunnel for water, uh, it's a water outflow situation. And then beyond that, on the West Coast, is other high speed rail opportunities. To add to uh, Tanner's comments about CSO, you know, cities such as uh, Indianapolis is completing some of their work. Uh, Houston, because of the hurricanes and flooding that's occurred in Houston, looks to be a next center for some of this uh, CSO type activity. But uh, Christina and Tanner, I'll throw it over to you for other major projects. Uh, in, the, in a nutshell, certainly on the East Coast and the West Coast, we have tens of billions of dollars of projects related to transportation and CSO coming up in the next five to 10 years. Yeah, I mean, from, from my end, a CSO right now is, is really big. A lot of the, the cities are under the deadline to, uh, to get those done. Um, but I think that the next big thing in tunneling is, is the, the high-speed rail. And uh, so we're hoping that, uh, that the cities and the municipalities and states can get funding for those projects. and uh, we hope to have a piece of them. Yeah, so there's a question about the new tunnel project in St. Louis, Missouri, if we were involved or going to be involved in that that's coming up here. I see that. Uh, yeah, we, we, SAK is a strategic account for our group and uh, Hayden Whittem, one of our business development leaders for the Midwest, he operates with that account. I think, uh, Tanner, you've been involved in some of the different meetings there. I don't know if you want to speak to this. Yeah, the uh, the Project Clear uh, tunnels in St. Louis, uh, are, there's uh, quite a few tunnels going in there. Um, we're looking to be involved. Um, there there were some, uh, some tunnels in the past that we weren't involved in, but uh, there is a really big one coming up that uh, they were hoping to be on. So, uh, uh, that's it for me. Thank you for the question. <laughs> yeah. Well, oh, she says the Hyperloop is, she's clarifying it's the St. Louis Hyperloop. So. Oh, the Hyperloop. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure about that one. That I think that may be uh, 
may be a ways off, but uh, we were definitely we would definitely be uh, trying to be involved in that in any way we can. Yeah, from a strategic stand, a business standpoint, we are engaged with the companies that have been bidding the Hyperloop job activity. So I would believe that because we're engaged with that group of companies, we probably will be involved in that work as well. So. Cool. Great. Well, um, there's a little time if there's any more questions. Now is the time. Speak now. Type now or forever. Hold your peace. Um, oh, here, the Hyperloop to DFW to Houston. That's a good tunnel. Have we been involved in that? Are we going to be involved in that? People are asking. <laughs> yeah, that would be another, the same, it's the same group of companies that are involved in looking at these Hyperloop projects. And uh, we are involved with these companies. I mean, when that these projects would come out to bid when a formal proposal would come out to bid and as discussed by Christina earlier there will be a GBR and then we would work with the, the customers with the GBR and the information is provided to provide our solutions to aid you know, this group of companies to be able to install uh, excavate and install these Hyperloop projects yeah. so cool well this has been very informative. Thank you all for this for this uh, fabulous webinar. It really was very exciting. Um, and it concludes our uh, our webinar presentation today. Thank you everyone for joining us this afternoon. Um, if you have any more questions, if you think of anything else, please uh, send them to mapaydigital at mapay.com and we'll be sure and get them answered for you. And uh, I guess have a great afternoon, everybody. And we'll see you next time. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Bye.